Hello, this is Alan Hale coming to you from the west coast of Wales and in this video I'm going to explain how to set up an integrated development environment, an IDE, in which you can produce applications or apps for the Android platform. We'll be using the well-established open source Eclipse IDE in combination with a plugin for Eclipse which gives you access to the Android software development kit. This combination will provide you with a wide range of programming tools as well as software emulators of Android devices like the one you can see on the screen right now. For this demonstration I'll be using a Windows 7 based PC as my development machine. Bear in mind the details may vary slightly if you're using another platform such as Linux. Also some of the software we are going to install comes in 32-bit or 64-bit flavors. I'm running 32-bit Windows so I'll be choosing versions appropriate to this. Check your own setup before starting. Now in order to use Eclipse you must have Java installed and you'll need the full Java development kit, the JDK, not just the Java runtime environment or JRE and you'll also need one of the later versions currently 5 or 6. To check whether you have Java installed and whether it's the right version open a shell window in Windows. You can do this simply by typing CMD in the search box down here and then clicking on CMD XE up here. Okay now just enter here Java space hyphen version and click return and then you should see something like this. So look for 1.6 something or higher now, if you don't see this, you'll need to install Java. So, head over to the Oracle website and uh, oracle.com tech network Java, Java SE downloads and you'll need to find here the, the version of the Java development kit appropriate to your development sh machine. So, I'm using Windows 7 as I say and I'm using a 32-bit version so this is the one I need to download and remember to accept the license agreement before downloading. Okay here we are I've downloaded the JDK installer and you simply click on that and continue. They just accept all the defaults here and there we go. Okay the next thing we need to do is to install uh, an Android software development kit so we'll go over to developer.android.com SDK index HTML and again we need to download the, uh, the version appropriate to, to our development machine so I'm going for the Windows platform and I'm going to take the recommended uh, self-installer XE. Okay and once you've downloaded it there it is double click. There we are and it's found the, uh, the JDK there version 1.6 which is excellent. Uh, you need to tell it where you're going to install the uh, Android SDK uh, and keep note of this because you'll need it later. and there we go that's uh, pretty straightforward okay you'll see a, a box here check by default to start the SDK manager so leave that checked click on finish and you'll now see options to download and install various tools and um, APIs and so on Okay, I, because I've done this before, you can see that I, I've installed the, uh, the 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 the, um, the platform and documentation and samples for the latest version of Android, Android 4.03. Uh, also, the Android SDK tools and uh, platform tools. And because I'm mostly working with 2.3 and 2.2. .2, 
I've downloaded the STK platform samples, Google APIs for those platforms. So that's already done because I did it before, but uh, if you need to download anything extra here, just check the box and click on install packages. You'll get another chance at this later on, so don't worry too much about getting this right at the moment. Okay, so now we need to get a copy of Eclipse, so go over to eclipse.org downloads. Um, there so, seems to be some debate over whether you can get away with the uh, Eclipse Classic version or whether you need the Eclipse IDE for Java developers. Um, I've used both uh, without any problems, but uh, I'm going to recommend probably that you go for the Eclipse IDE for Java developers. So again, I'm looking for the Windows 32-bit version. So you click on that, you'll see some mirror site come up and you download that as a it's a zip file and once that's downloaded you extract it So, having extracted from the zip file, you, you can uh, now need to open this up and find the Eclipse folder. And you can copy and paste this, or cut and paste, to wherever is uh, suitable for you. You could put that under my pro uh, under program files, or some people put it directly on the C drive. Notice that uh, you won't get any shortcuts on your start menu or your desktop install, so if you want those, you'll need to set those up yourself. So to start Eclipse, it's just a matter of running the Eclipse exe file. You'll need to define a workspace for keeping your Eclipse projects, so you'll need to set something up wherever again suitable, maybe under my documents, or in my case here now, I'm just going to use the the Android testbed. Folder that I set up, so Android testbed, testbed workspace and then you can tell it to use this as the default and not ask again. And note this is Eclipse code name Indigo that we're using. Okay, so uh, this is what the opening screen looks like. Now, we need to install the, um, the, the Android plugin, the Android SDK plugin. So what you need to do is go to help, install new software, and over here you've got a button that says add, click on that, put in a name, uh, I'm going to just say Android Development Tools, and then you need to actually type in the location here. So this is going to be dlssl.google.com forward slash android forward slash eclipse okay and it says pending there while it's looking for the uh, location okay uh, and there we are so you can just check that if you want to expand you can see what you're getting leave all of those checked and then continue to next So then it asks you to review the items to be installed. So if you're happy, click Next. Then you need to accept the license terms and conditions. And then you can finish. And then it'll install the software. This can take a little while, so if you want, you can run it in the background. 
It may give you a security warning that you're installing software that contains unsigned content. Uh, you can happily proceed with this, so click on OK. And then you need to restart. There we are, Eclipse has uh, started. Uh, and if you go to Window, you can see you've now got the Android SDK Manager here and uh, you'll see the same window we saw before so if you want to add additional platforms SDK platforms or tools you can add them from here just by checking the appropriate box and clicking install packages and you've also got the Android virtual device manager the AVD so you can see there are a couple here I've uh, I've created earlier the, the, these these control the platform and the appearance of the uh, the emulators, the device emulators. So if you want a new one for a different platform you just type in a name or whatever and uh, you select a target okay we've only got 4.3, we'll call it 4.3 and you can set a size for an SD card and uh, you can uh, change the skin and the resolution and so on but we'll just leave the defaults and you just click on create and there we are okay so you can test one of these emulators out by selecting it clicking start choose a screen size to uh, match your own display and launch it and there you see the emulator start to appear. Now once you start programming applications in the Eclipse IDE with the Android SDK plugin, you'll associate your application with an emula emulator of uh, matching the Android SDK level that you're programming for. So you'll see your when you launch your application it'll automatically load into the emulator and you'll be able to uh, use that for testing rather than having to load the application onto a real world phone or tablet uh, for testing which is a very useful feature so here, here you see this um, finishing up now you can unlock it click on the menu and there you see some apps starting to appear so OK, there we are. Now you can start programming Android applications within your Eclipse IDE.